Hello everyone, it's Jules by Jude here and I'm about to start to show you how I do some of my pyramids. So <clears throat> today in this episode we're going to start with this quartz crystal point. Okay, it's just a regular one. Fairly clear, nothing too special. Got a little chip on the top. All these little imperfections you're not going to be able to see through the resin inside. It's 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 good but it's not great the the quartz that is <coughs> so now i have two pieces of copper wire and it it's really doesn't matter i mean if you're going to use copper wire or if you're going to follow this video it doesn't really matter what gauge or anything else like that i would and i don't have this marked by the way but i think it's 26 uh gauge wire uh, it might be some of the recycled pieces. So I just took two pieces and I twisted it together like so. And I'm just going to place that on my crystal and pull the pieces over like this. And I hope you can see this. Because actually the wrap doesn't matter so much to some... It, in this instance it says if it does matter much to you then I recommend that you wrap you know what however you want it to look you know wrapped that some people do weaving that would probably look pretty cool a weaved piece inside of a piece of resin uh, pyramid of some sort but really what I'm trying to do is just wrap this up and so that you can see the crystal actually through the resin and that the resin is technically wrapped with a copper. Now um, in some instances and you can see and watch how I'm doing this I am just truly just wrapping it around and twisting the uh, pieces. It's not going to be a real fancy wrap at all. Uh, for me at this time it's not meant to be. It's just that I want my quartz point wrapped in copper that's all that matters to me in this uh, video and this for this purpose I do wire wrap on occasion and I have taught wire wrapping before but uh, that's definitely not the objective here so if you're following along and you're a student or past student you'll understand that we aren't doing this for any other purpose. Now, um, I'm not really going to show you or tell you what other people do except for this. Some people will suspend this over and I'm filming in a different way so I'm trying my best to uh, accommodate the camera. Um, a, a lot of people will hang this over with a, a, an object but Mine happens to fit pretty good in there. Let me see here. And I think I can get it to, to stand by itself while the resin hardens. So I have it wrapped as, like so. Uh, the tip isn't really wrapped very much. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me if it is or not. But if you want to top of the point to be visible to the naked eye I would assume that this is that you would wrap it from that point so I have it wrapped just enough and that's what it's going to look like so once again I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to stir up the resin and I'm going to show you how to pour that into the mold okay I've poured my resin it's uh, equal parts hardener and resin it is Rockstar because I do like this brand currently using this brand and I can't see if you can see. There we go. Rockstar. Uh, I am not going to heat up my resin as I did with the colsters in a previous video. I'm going to stir this and I'm not going to make you watch me stir it. I'm going to do it slowly as the directions. It's four ounces, one ounce of each. Okay, I just wanted you to get a look at the resin. You probably can't even tell there's resin in there because it's very clear. 
which means I'm done mixing it. I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to wait for the bubbles to come to the top, which is I've been stirring for about three to four minutes very slowly and scraping the sides. Sorry about that. Scraping the sides like so. It has not begun to cure or harden or heat in any way as of yet. And then I just set it down and let the bubbles come to the top. And I'll likely hit it a couple times with my lighter. And I'll show you how to pour it into the mold. Okay, we're going to pour the first portion of the resin into the mold. And we're going to do it as close to the center of the mold as possible without dripping on the sides of the mold. Just straight down. And in this case, the full two ounces. And yes, that's going to create more bubbles. And that's okay. But... I like to get bubbles out each process. This is going to be the first layer and uh, did that pretty good. So this is where the most important part comes involved in my opinion and that is the point. Now I have a toothpick that I have taken. As you can see it's a long one and I'm going down to the center of it very gently to push the air bubbles out of the point of my pyramid. This should work. And I do it a couple times gently because I definitely don't want to mar my mold because it is silicone and I can just jam it right in there and I don't want to do that. So I want to go down to the point and just move it like you were moving sand or something out of its way so that the resin drips down into the center where the pyramid point is, okay? I'm just so subconscious of it that I'm not sure it's necessary that you would need to do it this much, but I do it. Uh, to try to make sure that it's successful. Now I'm going to let that drip a second. Because I don't want to get it on the sides of the mold, there we go, I let it drip a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is hit this with my lighter to get rid of some of these bubbles before I go in with my crystal. And that really just is so that I can make sure I see where I'm going is the right way and such. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to put this crystal in. And it does go past my... Yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm going to just make sure... I'm going to have to go down and make sure that it's in there correctly, so... <clears throat> like it is and correctly for me is that there we go that it is as centered as humanly possible which means we have to get directly above it like you see right now and because of the size of the crystal it's self standing to some degree the corners of the pyramid is going to hold that up now what will happen after this hardens is, hopefully, anyway, I'm going to get some of these bubbles out. I will be able to snip the ends of that. You have to be careful that you just hit this. If you're going to do what I'm doing, then you have to be very careful that you don't burn your mold or heat your mold up too much or your resin. Just want to get those bubbles out. And then you rest and do it again as many times as you can. I'm not sure what we'll do on the next layer, but you'll see it soon. Okay, everyone, this is the product and the pyramid up to this point. We've got some snipping of the wires to do, and then we will be mixing up the next uh, uh, batch of resin for the next layer. 
and I just want to let you see that this is all it's all cured this level it is layer this layer is cured it's hard to see but it's you can see it through the pyramid and I cannot of course detach it from the mold at this point I'm going to mix up the resin I'm, I'm going to show you how to put in the uh, next layer what I'm I have chosen for it and um, we'll cut it and then we'll get, continue to go on everyone I've snipped off the end pieces of the copper that were sticking up from the crystal point the first layer as I mentioned was already cured and what I'm going to do here is place in oh this is a piece of chain mill um, that I did in a jewelry class and uh, I like the style and it's got carnelian beads in it and it's uh, got the copper, pure copper, uh, jump rings. So, what we're going to do, or I should say what I'm going to do, is place these around the outer edges of my pyramid until I am pleased with the pattern, which I'm nearing that now. Okay. So it's going to kind of be like that. And it is my second layer. I'm still not using any tint of any kind in that right now. And uh, I'm going to leave that extra copper there. Now I've already mixed my resin. I just want to make sure my placement I'm pleased with. I think I am. Well, I like that corner. It'd be a little sharper, but I don't think with circles and straight edges that's going to happen. So I'm just going to go for the rounder look. And flip that one over here. There we go. Maybe a little like that. I have to get up top and look at it from way up high and remember what I mentioned before where we are working from the top to the bottom in reverse there we go I think that's a little better absolutely okay I've already done my resin as I said so I'm going to pour the resin in from the top to the center I'm going to try not to get the resin on my sides. Now my objective here is to cover the beads and the copper. I'm going to stop and pause as I see if I have accomplished that with that amount of... I can do a couple more drops there. Harder to see from my angle. Okay, I'm just going to do a tiny bit more. Alright, I think that's good. So, now that I've done that, it's time to adjust while you still can. Once again, I'm going to take my very long toothpick and I am going to adjust accordingly. I have a couple extra jump rings here and I think what I'd like to do is add a little copper to the center and give it a little bit more depth. So we talked about my recycled copper before, and I'm going to take a couple pieces, I'm going to hold it over top, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit here and there so that you can still see the design of the beads. Now that should and will all drip down to the top. See what kind of effect that makes with the final piece. 
Well, I don't want to overdo it. I just want to place a few pieces here and there. This is the darker copper, not the lighter copper. Also, we talked about that in the other video. That I had darker and lighter copper is really either, you know, it's copper changes colors under certain conditions. And I'm going to go down and take a peek and see what we got going on there. So far for me, so good. I'll pop a couple bubbles as this. Um, resin engulfs the pieces the bubbles in the air will come up there's nothing you can do about that but pop them and sometimes you need to move your pieces around a little bit uh, so that the air will come up because you're trying not to get those bubbles on the side especially because that will not that will not be good your piece will have uh, rough edges and sides and even holes if that was to happen and a lot of times you just have to be a little bit patient as you can see as the bubbles come to the surface okay this is my second level I'm going to continue off film to eliminate any bubbles but there doesn't seem to be a lot there. So, I'll see you in the next level, the next layer. Okay, I've decided that my next layer is going to be mica sheets. I've already started putting them in. Um, I'm going to show you how I did it. This is my mica sheet. And if you've never worked with this, it's really pretty cool. It just <laughs> peeled apart. Um, growing up, in Delaware we always were able to find these I don't know uh, it must have been pretty prevalent there but we used to, when we did find them, we used to just pick slices off what I'm doing is breaking it up I have never put mica like this or any kind actually in resin so I don't know how it's going to turn out so it's going to be a bit of a risk and um, if you don't want it to be a bit, of, a bit of a risk, you can always try it in a little, you know, petri dish and uh, see what the effects are. But I've already gotten this far and I've decided, well, I'll just deal with it and uh, you guys can learn by my mistakes. But one thing you can tell from this type of view is that there's a little bit of rainbow action going on there. Uh, I was thinking about actually tinting the resin but I'm changing my mind on that too so this is what I'm going to do and I'm just peeling apart the sheets and breaking them up in smaller pieces just feel like that's what I need to do I'm not you, you could put them on the sides like that but I, I'm trying to stay away from the sides uh, too much you know like plastering something to the side because if the resin doesn't get behind it when you plaster it to the side then you have issues but there is a way of doing it and many people do it so uh, be back as soon as I am ready to pour the resin into this so that you can see that part and I'm not going to do too many layers because I really would like to just see how all this turns out on video and on the channel so I'm gonna poke it down a little bit because I have a feeling like you know the resin when I do pour it is going to want to get in between all that and it probably will cause plenty of bubbles but you know just be you know aware of that's how it is and many of um, different types of items that we use in resin will create bubbles so get used to that that's for sure and uh, you know how to get rid of them, so you, you need to use your techniques that you use. I currently use a lighter and try not to heat up the resin. I'll be back in a few. Okay, I have the um, resin mixed up and ready to go now. And I have as many pieces as I'd like to have of the mica in there. You can do it one or two ways, and both are proper. One is to pour the resin in. 
and then let the uh, mica uh, float down to the bottom because that's what it'll do if you put it right in. If you wait 15 minutes, you'll be able to maybe get the resin to thicken up a little bit and the mica will be lighter than the resin and it will just have a different effect. So this is the one I've chosen and I'm going to start to pour and what I'm doing again is pouring in the center and then I will start to move the mica around to make sure that it seeps in between the slices as much as possible especially along the sides. I don't want to get the resin on the sides of the mold if at all possible because this will not be my final layer. It isn't, you know, the end if not and I may add more mica but for now I, what I'd like to do is just get as much of this in here as possible. Okay, enough. And I'm not going to be terribly upset if I don't get the bubbles out on this one, by the way. Uh, sometimes for me, the bubbles add a special effect to the piece. So I'm not, you know, I don't always look at the bubbles as being a negative. Sometimes I see them as a really good positive. So this was four ounces. And keep in mind that as you grow in layers you're expanding outward and you'll need more resin to cover whatever it is the layer is so uh, in my other video the resin cured very quickly because I warmed it and in some instances that's fine and it did work perfectly fine in the coaster video but this you want to take your time and try not to have it cure too quickly because you may need to add and do other things for the effect. So I did use the entire four ounces in this layer and there is some void so I will go through and I'll show you very quickly because it's, it's, it's not something you need to watch me do, you know, in its entirety. So I'm going to move around my Oh, see that big pop? Oh, God, I hope I got that on video. See, that is a big air bubble there. Now, that one there is not one I would want to have, nor the ones on the side where they create a uh, cavity for the uh, resin. So, like this one here, pop. So, you just move it along, and the air is going to come up one way or the other, and um, hopefully to your advantage. And I am going to add more mica. Where do you get mica? Anywhere on the internet, mica sheets you can get. I just did a Google just to see if that would be the case, and it is. Uh, I can't really remember where I got my mica. I might have collected it because I do mine. And I'll show you what my bag looks like. So, all right, I'll be back after this layer dries. Right, the last layer's poured, and now all we have to do, well, the latest layer has been poured and all we have to do now is wait for it to cure and then we'll be back and I may be putting a final one on or I may change my mind we'll see the best part of this is revealing it at the end and so hopefully the Michael was a good choice we'll find out anyhow I gotta wait for this to dry before I could pour anymore all right see you in a few right, I've already mixed my resin and I'm gonna make this gonna be my last layer and what I'm going to do is make it a black resin layer. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to put this uh, resin here in a separate cup. I don't want it to be too thick of a layer. But with this alcohol ink, I'm going to drop in here a couple droplets. And I'm going to stir it. And I'll be back after I get it mixed up to be the right consistency because it's going to be very hard to do on the camera. Okay, so. now I have my resin. 
it looks like a dark green to me but it's supposed to be black so we'll see how it turns out in the end so I'm gonna pour it in now it does look green I uh, a little bit surprised but we'll see how it turns out maybe it dries differently but this is going to be the very last layer for me on this pyramid and there are other ways of mixing in the alcohol ink if you want uh, I'll show you that at a different time and it's a more consistent color instead of a little swirly color like this will turn out to be so I'll be back when it's done All right. we're gonna demold it maybe Surprise. And there she is. I'm going to take a better shot in a second here. 